Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Bitopia University's weekly discussions. My name is Amin Rafi, and on today's episode, we are going to be discussing decentralized finance, referred to as DeFi, and P2P lending platforms. All of these are made possible through the implementation of blockchain-based protocols and uh, decentralized systems. Very exciting things. I'm very happy to be able to give you a different view on how a blockchain-based system can provide to the many needs around the world and how these uh, benefit individuals uh, in particular uh, markets. So before we begin, you can find us at bitopia.org. You can register as a student. If you have a course that you want to host on Bitopia, you can reach out to us there as well. Uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter and uh, you can find many of our social media uh, channels on the bottom of the page. We will be adding uh, decentralized platforms as well, uh, just to give people an option when uh, wanting to communicate with us or participate, uh, whether you're contributing or collaborating. Uh, if you want to join our discussions, you can do so via campus.bitopia.org or you can join our Telegram group, bitopia underscore you. Uh, and it just makes it a bit easier to be able to communicate with people on these platforms. And uh, if you have something you want to share with us, please uh, reach out to us via those channels. You can also email us at uh, info at bitopia.org uh, should you want to use uh, that method of communication. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, the first project that I want to discuss is Ethic Hub. Ethic Hub is a very interesting project that a friend had sent me uh, because it involves the state of Chiapas within Mexico and I was living there. And uh, it's a very innovative way of uh, having a direct impact on individuals uh, where, where, they, where they need these sort of tools the most. So the reason I say that is because people living in South America, Central America, North America, and many other parts of the world don't have access to uh, financial systems. And when dealing with loans, uh, they can be paying rates of 50% or 100%. And that's very significant, especially when you're dealing with regions that don't have really the capacity to pay such a high interest. And then you compare that to regions like Germany, Netherlands, Australia, or the USA, where your traditional loan, you know, especially now with what's going on, could be 0%, though traditionally it's, let's say, 3%, 4%, 5%. And that creates some issues because you have on one side of the world where people's salary are significantly higher though they enjoy much lower interest rates when dealing with loans. And then you have another side of the world where people's salaries are significantly lower, uh, though they are facing interest rates that are 10 times or you know, significantly higher than other parts of the world. So if you're able to connect these two parts using technologies that are inclusive, so the reason I say inclusive is because technologies and the implementations of decentralized technologies as we have seen through Bitcoin or Ethereum are inclusive in that you can be anywhere in the world and you can participate within that network. So a Bitcoin transaction can be sent from anywhere in the world because it doesn't rely on a nation. It doesn't rely on a nation to authorize it. It doesn't rely on a centralized organization to authorize it. Therefore, we have opened up the channels of communication or the channels of transfer, in this case money, and people can really move in a direction that they have not had access to before. Now, if we were to take that technology and say, well, Bitcoin did a great job at representing decentralized uh, currencies, uh, what if we were to apply that to uh, lending platforms? Ethic Hub, in this particular case, has targeted a niche area. So Chiapas is a state within Mexico where it's agriculture is very strong. It's an agriculture based uh, industry. You know, a huge portion of their economy comes from that. And traditional farmers don't really have access to, you know, even if they were able to get it, you're looking at 50 to 100 percent as mentioned. So if you were able to offer something different, in this case, 15 percent, it's very beneficial for the farmers 
and beneficial for people who want to loan out money. So having a 15% return on your money is quite significant. And, uh, you know, when compared to living it in a bank account or a savings account. And for the farmers, 15% is very beneficial because, as mentioned previously, they are to uh, deal with much higher interest rates. And uh, if you look at, you know, the website, you can see various projects. So it will give you the scope of what it is that the farmer or the uh, particular individuals are uh, looking for and how you can fund them. So if we were to go see all projects, we can see a greater list of all these projects. And uh, for example, this one has been funded 81%. So it's similar to Kickstarter, though you're not dealing with a centralized organization, you're not dealing with all that bureaucracy because it doesn't involve uh, fiat currencies in that way. Um, you're funding it with uh, decentralized currencies. And uh, you're opening it, opening it up to a market that anyone in the world can uh, participate in. So in this case, anyone in the world with cryptocurrencies or decentralized cryptocurrencies can contribute to these projects. And it's open source, so you can take these projects and then you can modify it and use it in a different way for another need. Uh, so let's have a look at one. If we were to open one, we will be able to see the details of that request. Uh, so we can see what the money will be used for. We can see how many people have backed this particular uh, request. So 22 backers, repayment date April 22nd, 2021, local node fee. The local node is an individual that makes sure everything is done correctly because as you can imagine, a lot of people would be worried uh, if I'm dealing with P2P platforms and not a regulated centralized bank, what happens if I lose my money? What if the individual runs away and doesn't uh, do things as promised? So you have to keep in mind a lot of these decentralized platforms have actually like thought about this and uh, used a framework to make sure that everything uh, goes well and in a successful manner. So your local node is uh, in direct contact with the community there's a lot of protocols in place to make sure, you know, the farmer can repay the loans, guarantee that, you know, there's that the purchase order exists and the, the, the produce or the uh, requested material exists and it's all going to go well. Uh, so have a look at it. You can see various projects on there. You can see how it works and uh, We can see some of the information about the local nodes, so the individual on the ground that has contact with the communities. So this individual has helped out uh, 86 different projects hosted on Ethic Hub, which is great to see uh, that, you know, that, that high number of uh, projects being hosted on a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. And these are the very, very exciting uh, applications of decentralized systems. These are the things that I find very exciting because uh, when, it, when you discuss decentralization with someone or when you discuss blockchain systems with someone, traditionally they may think of Bitcoin and uh, its application in that way. Though when you show someone a living project, they no longer say, well, in the future, maybe they'll use it for other needs. A lot of people are unaware that today, as it exists, we already have working platforms using this technology and they are having a direct impact uh, where individuals need it the most. And this is uh, in a place where traditional financial systems have failed to provide uh, a similar opportunity for individuals. So it's very important to note that and uh, come to recognize the power of decentralization in being able to fulfill uh, voids that no other organization or system has been able to uh, fulfill. So that's one application and one implementation and uh, for a niche group of individuals and perhaps they will expand it for other needs in the future. Check them out, very interesting, very exciting. Another one that I wanted to show you is coin loan. So coin loan, instead of dealing with farmers and a niche uh, group of people, it's for anyone really that uh, wants to either get a loan or uh, and interest on uh, money that they have. So to get a loan, let's say you had one Bitcoin. 
uh, you wanted to borrow one Bitcoin. You would leave with them the amount required and you would set the term. Let's say I needed to borrow one Bitcoin for one year, just to make it a bit simpler to understand. I would leave with them 1.428, etc. Bitcoins as collateral and then my interest is 10%. At the end of it, I have to give back 1.1 on the one that I borrowed, which is quite fair. It's a lot more uh, inclusive platform. Again, a lot of these tools that, you know, depending on where you live, you may take for granted and be like, well, I can already do this. Um, though there are a lot of people around the world uh, who don't have access to these systems. There's 2 billion people actually who don't have access to traditional banking systems. And if you were to able, if you were able to include them, you can imagine the increase in entrepreneurship, you know, being able to look after themselves, for their families, for their communities. You can have a lot of impact in various parts of the world. And even if you're not interested in any of that, you can simply earn interest on your money. So let's say you have $10,000 or $1,000 laying, laying around. You can go and exchange that to a cryptocurrency like USDT, which is a stable coin, uh, though it's a centralized one, whereas the one Ethic Hub was dealing with is DAI, which is a decentralized stable coin. In either case, one DAI or one USDT equals one US dollar. It has been designed so that when individuals are dealing with financial applications such as loan, you're not dealing with the volatility that Bitcoin uh, introduces. Now there's arguments on whether this is okay or not, and that's up to individuals to discuss, though it has a great benefit for such tools um, because we want to keep a consistent value in our mind. And at the end of the day, a lot of these individuals need to pay their bills. Yeah, they care about the benefits of such technologies or may not. Uh, at the end of the day, they need to pay their bills and you need to be able to provide something that can allow them to continue existing and uh, continue uh, their, their livelihood. So if you have $1,000, you can exchange it on an exchange to USDT and you can loan it on this platform and earn $103 on your $1,000 in a period of one year. Uh, given the interest rate is 10.3, uh, you can calculate that and apply it to various amounts. And that's a very high interest rate if you were to compare it to your traditional banking systems. And uh, these are very valuable things. And I think when people see the actual value that they can earn money, that individuals can borrow, and uh, that's where it gets, I guess, a bit more interesting for people because then they can relate. They can see, oh, okay. I can actually use this. And these are ready to go. They're not uh, uh, promises of applications that are to come in the future. You know, th these are already ready to go. And you can learn a lot more about them. And uh, if you're wondering, uh, is, is it le legitimate? And uh, where is it? Yeah. The coin line is licensed in Europe as a financial institution, fully legal status and protected infrastructure, ensure the security of funds. So it, it all has been done in a very uh, clean manner. And uh, if you're worried about anything, you can reach out to them and ask questions. Uh, we are not affiliated with either project. Again, this is for educational purposes and uh, to allow individuals to understand uh, how decentralized technologies are being uh, used to tackle various challenges within our uh, global uh, arena and uh, give people some examples that may inspire them to do similar things and take these and apply it in different parts of the world. And uh, these are very exciting things, as I mentioned. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you took something or benefit from it. And if you have any questions, you wanna learn more, obviously you can register as a student with Bitopia and we will go into these on a much more thorough level. And uh, you can also reach out with questions via our Telegram or campus.bitopia channel. Thanks for watching this video and uh, hope to see you next time. Take care. Have a great weekend. Cheers.